Hello everyone, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, I am the IT Geek. Just want to give a quick recap on what we did in episode one of the multi-factor authentication series. We had an overview of what is uh, Azure multi-factor authentication. We had a look at how it works. We then looked at some of the requirements, including licensing and also some of the features. In today's episode, which is episode two of the multi-factor authentication series, we're going to get a bit more hands-on and configure a conditional access policy. We're going to create a conditional access policy to enable Azure MFA for a group of Azure users. We're then going to configure policy conditions that prompt for the MFA. We'll finish off the episode with doing a bit of MFA testing. So from the user experience, we'll be trying to register our multi-factor authentication token. So here we are in the Azure portal within Microsoft 365. Uh, I've logged in with a global administrator, which is a quite important fact you need to be in with global admin rights to be able to configure this. Let's click on Azure Active Directory to start with. From here, we're going to go down to the security option there. Uh, so here we have a lot of different options uh, throughout the video. We are going to obviously not this video, but throughout the series, we will be looking at all these different options, hopefully. Uh, we are interested in conditional access for this episode. So from here, we want to create, so there's obviously a couple of um, default policies already there that are in the off state. So we don't need to worry about those. We're concerned of creating a new policy. So if we just click on new policy, and we can just give it any sort of name. Um, I'm just going to call it FM MFA pilot. On the assignments, choose the users and groups. So here we obviously want to do it to a, a group. So we want to include select users or group, and it's going to be so groups. And here we're going to select the group that we have created. So I, in true Blue Peter fashion, I created a group earlier called MFA users, which I have a couple of test users in. So I'm going to select that group. So this policy will be assigned and include the users within this MFA users group. So the next step is to define a cloud app or an action. So if we click on here, uh, we have a few different options here. So I'll go through cloud apps first. You have the choice to include or exclude. Um, which gives you more control over what you're allowing or not allowing. So we can obviously at the moment it's set to none, so we can either leave it at none. We can include all cloud apps to uh, enable MFA, or we can do selected apps. Uh, as you'll see shortly, we're going to do a selected apps, which I'll, I'll click on in a second, but I just want to show you user actions quickly. So as it says here, select the action this policy will apply to. And the option there, the only one option there is to re register security information. So you can tick that. For this example, we're not going to do that. We want to go back into Cloud Apps. We want to select a specific application. So when we select that, as you can see, we've got quite a few different options. All the options within uh, Azure Enterprise Applications. Um, we're we're going to go specifically with the Microsoft Azure Management. Uh, application so I'll just I'll just quickly type in there as your management which is there so if we click on that select that and this gives you a warning so don't lock yourself out this policy impacts the Azure policy the, our portal so before you continue make sure you have another admin account global admin that you can sign in with, uh, just so you just don't get locked out like it says. So we're gonna make sure we have that in place. So once we've configured the cloud apps or actions, we can move on to the next option, which is conditions. For this policy, we're not actually gonna configure any conditions. We're gonna keep it simple. Uh, we're gonna do access controls, but what I will do is I will just quickly go through the conditions, just so you have an idea of what they include. So as you can see, there are five different options that we're going to go through. If we go to sign in risk, I'll just quickly hover over that. We'll have a quick read. It says the likelihood that sign in is coming from someone other than the user. 
So if we click on here again, this shows us what the different list level, risk levels are. There are four. So we'll configure that. Um, from the top of my head, um, these four signing risks, basically you've got users with leaked credentials. I think it's classed as a high. Uh, I think then you've got uh, quite a few medium ones, including signings from anonymous IP addresses, impossible travel, atypical locations. Uh, I think infected devices is a low risk. Uh, unfamiliar locations, I believe, is a medium risk. So there are there are a set of different triggers um, within each of these options, and you can essentially select which options apply to this policy. So we, like I said, we, we don't want to configure that. So we're just going to go back one. And let's have a quick look at device platforms. Platform the user is signing in from. So it could be the different types of devices. <clears throat> let's click on yes here gives us the option to again include or exclude device types uh, and it's the same as before it gives us a, a lot more choice to and, and flexibility with our policy having both the include and exclude option so if we just click on select device platforms as you can see there we've got Android iOS Windows Phone Windows and Mac OS and you can again depending on what your requirements are you can select whichever ones you want to be included as part of this policy as I mentioned, we're not going to configure that for this video. Let's click on locations, go a bit further down. We can basically config control user access based on their physical location. So if we just click on yes. And again, same again, there's, there's a common theme here. You can include or exclude uh, with most of these options. And you can select all trusted locations if you've got those configured. Or you can configure specific locations and that's all it will we've got the option there of MFA trusted IP addresses, uh, which we do go into in one of the videos. Um, I'll show you where the trusted IP addresses are. As I mentioned, we're not going to configure the locations, so I'll click on no there. Check on client apps. So just hover over that. This is software the user is employing. Uh, to access the cloud apps. So again, this is around the application stack that you use. So we're going to configure. This gives us the options of where we're going to use modern authentication clients like a browser or mobile apps for desktops. Or are we going to use legacy authentication clients? Now, uh, with, with Azure and multi-factor authentication and the, the latest version of um, OAuth and modern authentication, you can't actually use older authentication clients. So Outlook 2010 no longer supported. So this is a good option if you want to try and uh, prevent people from using multi-factor authentication with legacy authentication clients, you can untick those. Um, I'll click out of here. If we just look at the final option here, device state. If we hover over that. Whether the device the user is signing in from is hybrid as your AD joined or marked as compliant. So this is around the compliancy really and the device type. Um, so if you've got like a hybrid environment and you want your um, hybrid as your AD joined devices to use MFA, you could you could come and use this option. Uh, and again, you can use include or exclude option. Um, so again, we're not going to be configuring this. I just wanted to quickly show you some of the options you had within the conditions. So we've had a quick look at the conditions options, which obviously we're not going to do for this video. So if we go down to access controls uh, and grant. Here we need to make sure that this option is selected, so the grant access. And for the purpose of this video, we just want to tick require multi-factor authentication. So that's telling this policy that this is, is required uh, and essential. So if we make sure that's selected. Uh, and again, for this policy, for this policy, we're not going to do a uh, session, but again, just, just want to click on it and show you what it does. So it's basically to control user access based on session controls to enable limited experiences within specific cloud applications. Uh, so again, it, it's outside the scope of this particular video. Um, but again, I just wanted to show you what the possible options are. So the final thing to do now is, well, two final things. We want to enable the policy. But we want to select um, one of these three options, really. We've got report only, uh, which is more of a test mode. We've got turn it on. I'll just configure it and leave it off. 
Um, so we are going to um, turn it on for the purpose of this and click on create. So I'll go and create, I've done it quite quickly. Uh, so we now have an MFA pilot policy which we are pretty much ready to test. In the final part of this video, I'm just going to show the experience the user has when MFA is enabled on their account. So on the simple policy, conditional access policy that we created, we just did it for the Azure portal, the management portal. So that's where we are here. And I'm just going to log into that with the test account that was part of the group, the MFA group. If I just paste that, so Megan B is in that group that's assigned to the conditional access policy. So we just log her in. I'm sure she won't mind. How can you paste something wrong? I have no idea, but I've just done it. Uh, so we've got to sign in. So in this instance, as you can see, we've been prompted for um, a code which is going to be texted to my number. Um, so what I do is I check my phone. As you can see there, I've got the text message. So I type this code in. Uh, Eight, six, one, two. So this is a one-time code. It's not a code that can be used again. Click on verify. And that logs me into the Azure portal. So there we've done uh, the MFA for the user who we've enabled the policy for just to show that it works. So I just want to quickly recap what we've done in this episode. We created a conditional access policy to enable Azure MFA for a group of Azure users. We then configured a policy condition that prompted the user for MFA. We then finally tested the policy to prove that it works and we received a text message with a code on a one-time code which allowed us to use the multi-factor authentication. So that brings episode two of the MFA series to an end. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. If you do have any questions for me, please feel free to hit me up on my Twitter, which is at Shabazda. Or if you leave me a comment or a question I'll, on the video, I'll do my best to reply. In next week's episode, we're going to go into some additional MFA settings and how to configure them, including account lockouts, additional authentication settings, as well as MFA users and service settings. Thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.